So this video is a little strange and that it's not exactly planned. I mean, I was going to record a different video and I'm still going to do that. But then I just saw this topic come up like half an hour ago. So I thought, why the hell not? Why not just make some quick notes and go over the topic? So today I want to talk about slacktivism and specifically when slacktivism applies and when it doesn't. Because slacktivism is a great term. It has a role in discussion about politics and certain people and demographics doing the bare minimum work in politics. But I find it to be highly overused. So in the response to the Revoke Article 50 petition, which just broke 5 million, if you don't know what Article 50 is, it's in relation to Brexit and when it has to go through, etc. A writer by the name of Mark Smith posted a tweet. Now, sadly, he's removed the tweet along with all of his content, save for a single post, which links to one of his articles. So I can't show you the exact tweet. I can only give you a general paraphrasing of it. So please take what I say here with a pinch of salt. What they said was something along the lines of nothing like a good bit of slacktivism. I wonder how many actually did something. How many stood on picket lines or volunteered? I wonder how many voted conservatives. This is what's wrong with modern politics. Now, I had a few issues with this, which I responded with. I took issue mostly with the slacktivism part, though thinking back on it, I also take issue with the conservative dig, and I'll explain why in a second. But first, let's deal with the slacktivism charge. Now, I offered three main reasons as to why someone may want to sign the petition and not have done much else. There were people who were too young to vote at the time, there are people living in other countries, such as myself, and there are people with disabilities, again, such as myself, who can't always partake in large protests, events, etc. One I should note that I forgot mentioning is the fact that there are people out there working multiple jobs or working and they have children. Again, I come from a single mother household, my mum was working overtime a large part of her life, and she still does today, but she does so voluntarily because she wants the extra money. Back then, it was a necessity. She would have had absolutely no time to protest, to do all this, between, you know, looking after me and my brother and working. So it's a bit elitist and classist to assume that just because a person can't get out and do something that they're a slacktivist. There are genuine reasons as to why someone may not be able to go and do such. It really is just this hoity-toity attitude to being on the left. Oh, well, I'm a reasonably well-off white cis man, so I can do all the things that I want. Why can't you do it? Not all of us have the funds or the time or the means. You know, it really isn't as simple as people like to pretend, that there are real issues to deal with slacktivism when, for example, a person can't even be bothered to, say, boycott a organization which is, for example, funding hate in the Daily Fail. Not buying something, that's easy, as long as there are other alternatives, of course. But, you know, going out, protesting, putting in hours and hours of work, that's not easy. I did a year work placement completely unpaid at an LGBT plus charity, and I had to work a second job just to pay to get through. So again, it's not that simple. As for the conservatives, I can totally understand the anger at them getting us in this situation, but you don't berate people for changing their mind and finally doing what you want. I mean, this is like the parent who has the child who's a bit socially awkward, so typically stays in their room, etc. And they keep telling them, why don't you come down? Why don't you spend time with us? And then they finally come down and they just respond, well, isn't it good of you to join us? Like, do you not see the problem there? You're just being a dick to be a dick. Not to mention the fact that you know nothing about any of these people. Now, as noted, the tweets are gone, but people's responses remain such as the ones noting that one million people marched in London recently. An actual million people march against Brexit. So it's not a case of it's been total slacktivism. People have been doing what they can. But yeah, I just wanted to go over that quickly. Again, this was just a very quick, short video. Just keep this in mind next time you think, oh, well, this is just slacktivism. Maybe that's all a person can do. Maybe that's the only way they can get their voice heard. Again, 
don't do away with the concept altogether, it has a lot of use and a lot of value, uh, especially for people like this who spend more time complaining about people that they're supposedly on the side of than they actually do tackling the issue. But what do you guys think? I haven't prepared any questions for this. Uh, but what do you guys think? Do you guys think that the term slacktivism is overused? Should we understand that people, specifically disabled people, working class people, and people in other nations can't exactly turn up and protest at every event? Yet should that be understood? The fact that people have lives? Or am I just being completely unreasonable? Is there anything that I missed that perhaps you picked up on? If so, be sure to leave us a comment down below. Now don't forget that you can support us on Patreon, we are trying to make the channel ad free so be sure to go check that out. And speaking of Patreon, I just wanted to thank all of the wonderful people who have donated to the channel over the years, giving a special thanks to the following people. Hannah Banghart, Matthew Kovac, Brad R, McGay, John Schoenrock, Daniel Martinez, Evan Heinberg, Alexander Williams, and Atlas 5. Take care now, and I'll see you next time.